moments later. No more Joe! 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 What do you make it about Biden not showing up? You showing up before he did. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Take a picture of my phone. All right, guys, so we got to talk about former President Donald Trump, who is looking real presidential these days compared to his successor, Sleepy Joe Biden, who is busy in Ukraine while ignoring the East Palestine crisis. OK, Biden has essentially given the middle finger to middle America to Trump country because the Biden administration, they, they don't like um, rural middle class white people. OK, I'm just keeping it 100 with you that's what it is okay i mean in fact this guy made some pretty insane comments just the other day at a speech on black history where he said unequivocally that there's still some white people today that want to lynch and castrate black folks okay and mail postcards of lynched castrated beaten up black people to their white family members right he says that there's still white people alive today that want to do that pure terror to systematically undermine hard-fought civil rights. Innocent men, women, children, hung by a noose from trees, bodies burned, drowned, castrated. Their crimes, trying to vote, trying to go to school, trying to own a business, trying to preach the gospel, false, false accusations of murder, arson, robbery, lynched for simply being black, nothing more. With white crowds, white families, <clears throat> gathered to celebrate the spectacle, taking pictures of the bodies and mailing them as postcards. Hard to believe, but that's what was done. And some people still want to do that. Yeah, that is truly amazing. Okay, I think he conveniently leaves out the fact that he grew up <laughs> being friends with some of those white Southern Democrats that wanted to lynch black people or did lynch black people along with white Republicans as well, too. Uh, that were fighting for civil rights, right? Joe Biden just conveniently leaves that out. But anyways, uh, while Biden is being a divider in chief, uh, President Trump is being the uniter in chief as he is leading in a way that you would expect from the president of the United States. As again, he visited East Palestine with a truckload of supplies and water and some words of encouragement and hope for those residents who uh, unfortunately are being poisoned after the uh, East Palestine train derailment uh, that, you know, the mainstream liberal media and the Democrats have ignored, right? They don't really want to talk about it because, again, that's, that's Trump country. Hey, y'all, this is Savannah Hernandez on the ground in East Palestine, Ohio. Now, I wanted to uh, bring you guys on location to what we're seeing as former President Donald Trump is set to visit the town later on today. Now, what you're seeing behind me uh, seems to be people who are testing the waters of the area. And I've just been here walking around because, again, the EPA has told residents that the air and the water is safe. However, there's an extremely toxic smell in the air. And as you guys can see behind me, we're in a neighborhood. People still live in this area. Um, we're seeing these water pumps all around the city we've been walking around we've been here for about 30 minutes uh, we're consistently seeing this we're seeing a lot of these crews in the river uh, i was actually watching these guys wade through and you can see the chemical sheen on the surface of the water i was also speaking to a local who was telling me that yes local animals of course dying after drinking the water we heard the reports from residents complaining of headaches and rashes after again that toxic train derailment that sent chemicals such as vinyl chloride into the environment that happened on february 3rd now of course the current administration has come under quite a bit of fire after they initially denied this city of federal disaster relief also we didn't hear much from pete Buttigieg initially it took him about 10 days to tweet out about the train derailment about the crisis that is happening here now, just yesterday, Buttigieg said that he is going to be making an appearance uh, here and he's going to be making a visit to the town. He has not said when he is going to be doing that quite yet. Yeah. So speaking of Pete Buttigieg, the secretary of the Department of Transportation, who's gone missing in action, 
Uh, where is he? Well, uh, he was caught <laughs> basically spending time with the only white man uh, or white men that uh, Democrats actually like, which are non-straight ones. In this case, uh, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg was last seen spending time with his husband out the breastfeeding his kids. Secretary, what do you have to say? Hi, how are you? Good. Jenny Taylor at the Daily Caller News Foundation. What do you have to say to the folks in Ohio, East Palestine, who are suffering right now? Well, I've referred to about a dozen interviews I've given today, and uh, if you'd like to arrange a conversation, uh, make sure to reach out to our press office, but I'm not going to have that conversation with you. Just you don't have a here. message for them? I do, and I shared it with the press many times today. I'd refer you to those comments. Would you mind sharing it with us? No, I'm going to refer you to the comments that I made to the press because uh, right now I'm taking some personal time and I'm walking down the street. Are you going down there? <clears throat> What's up? Are you going down there at all? Um, yeah, I am. When are you going? Uh, I'll share that uh, when I'm ready. Okay, I'm not talking thank you. Can I, get a, can I get a photo of you? Yeah. So again, Trump uh, went out there to visit. And I want to play some highlights of his visit and uh, a speech that he gave because the mainstream liberal media, including Fox News, okay, uh, chose not to cover it. And I think that, you know, Trump in this situation uh, is acting real presidential. And I think that this deserves attention because he's doing a good thing for these people. Take a look. Um, enjoy your meal, and we're going to get the meals for the fire department. Okay, hello everybody. What's your specialty today? Nice How are you today? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Hello everybody. That's a nice, beautiful looking group of people. So I know this menu better than you do. Okay? I probably know it better than anybody in here. Uh, we're going to take care of the fire department. Okay. We're going to take care of the police department. And what we do is all the people that are eating. Right I'm now. the owner, Mr. Tr Mr. Oh, President. So How are you? I don't have to give him. That's right. <laughs> That's a good one to own, right? Yes, it is. One of the best. So we're going to take care of your fire force. Plus the people that are in here, they're going to get a nice free meal. All right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Nice. Good one, huh? Yes, it's very My first store. Oh, really? Yeah. How many do you have? I have eight stores. Whoa. He's a wealthy guy. Huh? Is, he a good, is he a good boss? He's a wonderful boss. Uh, I do want to... Uh, especially thank some of the incredible people that uh, helped us because we're bringing thousands of bottle of water, Trump water, actually, most of it. Uh, some of it we had to go to a much lesser quality water. <laughs> you want to get those Trump bottles, I think, more than anybody else. But we're bringing a lot of water, thousands of bottles, and we have it in trucks, and we brought some on my plane today. But to that end, I'm pleased to announce that we've helped coordinate the delivery of the water and bottled water as uh, well as the tractor trailers full of it. We have big tractor trailers full of water. I think you're going to have plenty of water for a long time, maybe. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. What's your thank message you, to Joe Biden before you leave? Thank you. Thank you. Get over here. Yeah, right. Thank you. thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, so that's Trump telling Biden to get over here, right? Show your face. Show your face in Trump country and help these people that are currently being poisoned. But, I mean, who knows? I don't know if Biden's back in the country at all. I mean, he's probably still in Ukraine playing with Zelensky. Um, <laughs> but, hey, you know, the mainstream liberal media, again, is ignoring uh, Trump going to East Palestine. They don't want to cover it. They don't want to make Trump look good. But one thing they are um, covering about Trump is, of course, another witch hunt, okay, in which you have Georgia currently investigating uh, Trump, okay, uh, for the crime that only became a crime after Democrats said it was a crime after the 2020 election, which is questioning the results of the election. Specifically, Georgia is basically deciding whether or not they want to indict President Trump and his associates for interfering in the election after the election was over, right, post-election interference. And um, the grand jury forewoman, Miss Emily Kors, gave an absolutely ridiculous interview to the mainstream liberal media uh about whether or not trump would be indicted and more details about what's currently going on with that situation and again this is truly one of the most bizarre interviews i've ever seen in my life it was like they were interviewing a child take a look we're talking about multiple people yes how long how multiple. many people was this a long list it's not a short list so we're talking about more than a dozen people i would say that yes okay are these recognizable names, names that people would know? There are certainly names that you would recognize, yes. 
there are names also that you might not recognize, or there are names that like you might recognize as someone who's followed this case, but then you know your mother might not recognize because she doesn't care about the intricacies of the case. Um, but there definitely are some names that you expect. Did the grand jury recommend an indictment of former President Trump? I'm not going to speak on exact indictments. Would we be surprised? Are there bombshells of who is I being don't recommended think, for indictment? I don't think that there are any giant plot twists coming. I don't think that there are any, like, giant that's not the way I expected this to go at all. Mm. I, I don't think that's in store for anyone. So nothing that would surprise people who have been following this? Uh, probably not. Um, I wouldn't want to characterize anyone else's reaction, of course. But so that was one we heard a lot in testimony. Um, but probably not. It probably wouldn't shock you. I would not expect you to be too shocked, no. And that includes of the former president, potentially? Potentially, it might. I think that there were a lot of people that we could have subpoenaed, and there are a lot of people that we honestly, like, might have subpoenaed, but there was also, I don't know, partially the time factor. Like, if we had subpoenaed everyone who had potentially something to say about this, we would probably be there for two years. You know what I mean? Like, there are just so many people involved. Did you personally want to hear from the former president? I wanted to hear from the former president, but honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. Mm. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in, I just, I kind of just thought that would be an awesome moment. I can see how trying to get the former president to come talk to us would have been a year in negotiation by itself. So it sounds like that was ultimately <laughs> a battle that you all decided not to wage. Exactly. That's, that's kind of how it ended up. Was that and I'd be fascinated by what he said, but do you think he would have come in and said anything groundbreaking or? just the same kind of thing we've heard. So at some point you don't need to hear 50 people say the same thing. Mm. You know what I mean? At some point you kind of start to get the gist. <laughs> yeah, so that interview was like 12 minutes of masturbation material for the mainstream liberal media who is now claiming in response to this interview that once again, you know, Trump's gonna go to jail, right? Believe us this time, okay? This is the thousand time we said that Trump is gonna go to jail but trust us, this time, Trump is going to jail. This is not going to be the White Lotus, where you don't know who was killed and who did it and when it happened. What she is saying is, it's obvious. And, and when you combine that with everything else that we know, including Judge McBurney's opinion, I, I, I don't think there's any conclusion you can come to here other than... Mm. Donald Trump is going to be indicted in Georgia. Yeah, Trump's going to be indicted, right? He's going to be indicted, which again is code name for, hey, <laughs> Trump's going to jail, right? This is what the liberal media is hoping for. Uh, but what this ultimately is, is just another witch hunt. It's just another investigation into Trump that's going to be used uh, to basically try to sway the outcome of the election in 2024 if Trump is the GOP nominee. That's exactly what they're going to do, which is the irony here. Okay, the irony here is that they're indicting Trump Okay, or they're thinking about indicting Trump for post-election interference in 2020. You know, the Brad Raffensperger, you know, phone call. Uh, that's probably, that's what they're going out there for. Um, but what's going to happen here is that they're going to drag this out. Uh, and then they're going to probably try to <laughs> decide to indict him uh, right before the presidential election um, in 2024. Right? Because that's how this always works. Okay? Uh, if they do decide to indict him. Right? If they decide to indict him. Uh, is definitely going to happen right before the election to try to sway the outcome of the 2024 election. We know how this works, okay? We know how it works. So, hey, you know, um, again, President Trump out, you know, in East Palestine, being a man of the people, showing Sleepy Joe how to be the real president. Um, and again, I, I'm just, you know, very happy and thankful for President Trump 
for doing that. I think he provided a lot of much needed help and assistance to those people. People who have been forgotten in this country because, you know, they don't have the right sexuality, the right, um, <laughs> you know, race or, you know, economic status or whatever. Um, I think it is important when you have the president of the United States to stand up for people in this country that, again, don't get enough attention and aren't talked about enough. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.